Ugh, ads are such poop. Subscribe to ACAST Plus now to skip ads and more for just $1 a month. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. And hey, we're on Patreon too. Your support helps cover the cost of running a podcast. For $2 a month, you can get early access to all our episodes ad-free, plus bonus episodes exclusive to Patreon subscribers only. Visit patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse to sign up now. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys. We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what today is? Well, it's Saturday, so that means... Q&A Saturday! That's right, and what are we queuing and aing today? Well, God started talking in these most recent chapters, and so I thought we would maybe look into that. He should probably shut his duck slippers. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, yep, yep. (laughs) So, yeah, I thought we would... uh... Find out what God's talking about Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. something? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into this and see what what God had to talk about, I guess. I guess. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Let's talk about God, baby. <laughs> no, no. Okay, first I'm going to do a little bit of a recap over. What um, happened? Yeah, and how we got here. Right, yeah. Not here like in our living room or like here on the planet, just yeah. like here in the in the book right. that we're reading. I figured since, yeah. you know, we're talking about the Bible. Right. <laughs> so Job's friends see that Job is suffering and they assume he must be guilty since obviously God is just. Right. I think they should he put is. friends in quotation marks. Though. They should. They should. Because they're assholes. I don't think these are Job's friends. No. I think these are three guys who are friends who happen upon Job. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. Sure. So, But Job, knowing that he is innocent, concludes, obviously, that God must be unjust. Right. Which right. I think that's fair. I think that, yeah, I do too. Killed all the fucking kids. Yep, yep. That's, I mean, the boils, that's kind of a side issue. But, you know, the kids thing. The Ten kids, kids thing really bugs me. It really does. Now, Job retains his piety throughout the story, contradicting the adversary suspicion. And the adversary, of course, is Satan. Right. Or the Satan. Yeah. The adversary. Okay? Right, right. Um, with him retaining his piety contradicts Satan's suspicion that um, his righteousness is due to the expectation of reward. Now, I will say this. He did ask some really good questions. He asked very pointed questions. And Job, that is. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. So, but throughout him asking his questions, he didn't like specifically curse God. No. He just but questioned. He asked, and he asked good enough questions that they felt the need to add a section condemning his Ellie responses. Who. Yeah, so, they added an Elihu. Yeah. That is correct. Um, But he does, Job does make clear from his first speech that he agrees with his friends that God should and does reward righteousness. Right. And that is true. He does do that. I mean, in the Bible. Well, I mean, yes, obviously. No, I know. I just like to to clarify. In canon. Yes. Now, then along comes your friend Elihu, you know, who rejects the arguments of both parties. He states that, one, Job is wrong to accuse God of injustice as God is greater than human beings. And he also states, too, that neither are his friends correct, for suffering, far from being a punishment, may rescue the afflicted Mm. from their affliction and make them more amenable to revelation. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I I just want to point out, though, that... He's um, a dick? No, that Elihu, those chapters were added after the fact. They were not originally part of the Job Correct. story. Correct. And they felt compelled to add them to contradict the things that 
Job, Job was saying and yes, questioning. Job was too challenging. They felt that he was being blasphemous. So they did add those chapters later, which we learned in last week's Q and A. Right, right. Yes. And I just it to me that's very important because mm-hmm. the questions that Job was asking were very good and pointed. Yes. So and and they could be take. I can see why they were taken as blasphemous. Sure. Honestly. Sure. Um, cause we agreed with them. Uh, yeah. We were very enthusiastic, which is why it was so disappointing when Job like just laid down like a puppy. Yeah. Like, that was womp, bullshit. Womp. Yeah. So from chapter 38, God comes in and that's when he gives his first speech. Yeah. Okay? He gives two speeches. Okay. And we've heard the full first one and then we've heard the beginning of the second one. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. So he speaks from a whirlwind and. I thought it was a storm. Well, it depends on the translation. Okay. So Got it. a whirlwind, whirlwind of a storm, storm whatever. tempest, yeah. whatever you want to call it. It's so rough, whatever it is. It, it ain't good. Right. God's speeches do not do any of the following. Okay. okay? They do Answer not, any questions? Yeah. Specifically. <laughs> specifically, yes. They do not explain the reason for Job's suffering. Right. Like, not at all. They do not defend divine justice. Right. They do not enter the courtroom confrontation that Job has demanded. Right. And they do not respond to Job's oath of innocence. The question is going to remain, is this because God feels like there's no need to do this because mm-hmm. he's God? Yes. Yes. Okay. That See, that's bullshit. Right. I mean, that's that's absolute bullshit. No, I totally He literally, agree. I mean, we've talked about this. He's made a, a bet with fucking Satan mm-hmm. and he killed this guy's kids for it. I know. That's crap. It's utter crap. I totally agree with you, sir. And you do owe an explanation. I'm sorry. You do. Yeah. Yeah. So what he does instead, though, is contrast Job's weakness with divine wisdom and omnipotence. So, which we complained about. Um, right. He dodged the question and was like, but I am great, right? But this is this is like your boss saying... I know so much more about this, da da da, da you know, just going on about mm-hmm. how they know so much more about the job and this, that, and the other, but mm-hmm. but yet you're complaining about something that you're absolutely right on, but it doesn't matter because they're just giving you their fucking resume. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit what you've done. This is wrong, and mm-hmm. we need to address the fucking issue in front of us. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. the fucking resume you built over many years that makes you more qualified than me doesn't make this any less wrong. Yeah. Exactly. I just, fuck that. I mean, you've just described every woman who has been sexually harassed by a boss, you know? Right, right. Like, he's the boss, though. Yeah. So was it sexual harassment? <laughs> right, right. I mean, uh, still yes. But there's, but there's also- no world in which a human being could kill somebody's 10 kids mm-hmm. and then just claim that, well, just- I'm more powerful than you, so you just have to... I mean, yeah, okay, You could, let's look at it from a king perspective, right? Mm-hmm. A king could kill your 10 kids, right? Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Does it make it right, though? No. Does it make it to where you shouldn't, should you be able to question his actions? You should, yes. Right. So just because you're more powerful does not make the action right. Just because you have. But now you're arguing morals, and we've already decided that God is not moral. Right. But that's a problem because people think that morality comes from the Bible. Right. It definitely does not. Oh, it totally doesn't. Not unless it's shitty fucking morality. It's a lack of morals. Right. Is what I'm finding. Yeah. It's um, a men's world. (laughs) It definitely is. Definitely is. God's first speech focuses on his role in maintaining order in the universe. Okay. He reveals a list of things that he does and that Job cannot do. Which that's, that shouldn't be real fucking hard considering you're God. Yeah. Like, like wow. Yep. Con- congratulations, dude. Magic man is magic. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> this demonstrates divine wisdom because order is the heart of wisdom, which harkens back to chapter 28. Um, I don't know if you recall when he was going on and on about wisdom and how he assessed it. Yeah. Remember? Right, right. That was, that was the poem to wisdom. Got right? it, yeah. Which stressed the inaccessibility of wisdom. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because we did read about that and comment on that whole chapter was about he's wisdomy wise, but um, he came upon it, which means he didn't create it, question mark. So he's saying that, the, but he's saying that order is wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So order is as defined by God, mm -hmm. whatever God defines it as. Mm -hmm. And so there is no questioning this order that he instills into or whatever institutes into the world. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to deal like it's stupid. This is I set the rules. Now you must follow them. And you cannot question them. Sorry. Yeah. Um, there's no one else to take this up to. Problem. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. That It's just dumb. So God alone knows the meaning of the world, then and that can He be, yeah. grants it only to those who live in reverence before Him. Mm. Facts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God possesses wisdom because He grasps the complexities of the world. Okay. The world that He created he, is complex, right, right? But He, it, it, He, it's a circular logic. Right. It shouldn't be complex to him. He should already know everything about it, and it should be pretty simple to him. Mm -hmm. But but yet, he doesn't know whether or not... He, he's making a bet with Satan and mm -hmm. then chooses to go through with the bet because he's not firm enough in his belief about what Job will do, and he allows Satan to make him make this bet. Okay, but apologists would point out that... Um, God did know the answer and that he was using Job to show the adversary that he had all well in hand. But why would, why would God need to show off? Why would God need to prove anything? You're fucking God. That's my question too. And yeah. hypothetically, if you created everything, you created your adversary. So why, why? Right. It, it, this, it makes literally no sense. No, I agree. Okay. All right. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you trying to convince? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I, it just pisses me off. No, obviously. I, I get upset about it as well. So yeah. So I'm right there with you. Okay. All right. Okay. So there is a contemporary movement known as creation theology, and it's an ecological theology valuing the needs of all creation. And they interpret God's speeches to imply that. God's interests and actions are not exclusively focused on humankind. Now, I didn't go into all of that. I just thought it was interesting to note that okay. this is proof that he's got a lot more than just humans on his mind. Right, because he's listing off all the other things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I think that's a bit of a stretch. Right. And he is definitely human centric in his actions as far as punishment and everything. It's mm -hmm. not like the fucking. Let, okay, all right. Let's take for example when the when he was mad at the fucking Israelites and Moses was walking through the desert and they were complaining about food, right? Yeah. He literally takes that moment to punish them by killing a fuck ton of quails. Right. Right. What I mean, so if he has all the rest of of the world and and life in his mind, he just willy nilly just decides to kill a bunch of fucking quails for no good reason. Right. Other than he wants to get back at the fucking. You're Israelites. hungry. I'll show you then. I'll make you overstuff yourself. I bet those quails didn't like what happened. Probably if not. If you had to ask me, so fuck the ecological um, argument here for what God is taking care of because He just killed them willy nilly for His own fucking pleasure to get back at the goddamn Israelites. It's true because He's a vengeful little. Fuck. He really is. So God's first speech focuses on his design and control of both the physical world and the animal world. Remember, he's like, you know, where where were you or, you know, were you there when this was created and right. that was created and these Obviously, animals? Obviously, the answer to that is no. Right. Beside the point, completely, right. but yeah. still, okay, the answer is no, sir. Job has lived through the suffering, you know, that he lost his children yeah. and all of his livelihood and um, all of his servants and everything, and then was covered in boils and lost the respect of his community and sure. um, his friends and family, like his wife disdains him and all that. Right. So he's lived through all that suffering without cursing God, holding his integrity, and nowhere regretted it, but he was unaware of the real reason for his suffering. Right. So... God intervenes to resolve the spiritual issues that surfaced once, you know, he was raising these points. Okay. That's when God intervened. But doesn't this kind of negate, like, shouldn't, shouldn't part of, if, if you're really going to bet, right? If you're really going to see this out to the end, mm -hmm. shouldn't God just completely fucking abandon him and see if he ever curses God? Right. Like, it should have gone, I guess, for 
years or like right, until his dies. death yeah. or something. If you're going to yeah. make a bet, fucking do it the whole the, the whole thing. I guess, yeah. Make him suffer the whole way. I guess. But Don't, I mean, it's been, then, what, a few days? They just got done with their fucking discussions or whatever. So he's, he's what, giving this a few days and then he's intervening before... I would say probably a few months. Okay, let's say even a few months. But still, Mm -hmm. he's intervening to correct this or -hmm. whatever. Something. He's he's intervening to show he's there. Yeah. 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 And Job was not punished for sin, and Job's suffering had not cut him off from God. Okay. Okay. So, you know, God comes in and and talks to him instead of, like, punishing him. Yeah. Right. Which that's interesting enough. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean... People have been punished for less yeah, in the past. Yeah, definitely. And you, we we talked about it early on in the Bible. You can't bitch at God right. without reaping some sort of fucking punishment. Right. So. But God is basically like, your understanding is too limited to see my purposes. So now Job sees that he cannot have the knowledge to make the assessments that he made. And so it's wiser to bow in submission and adoration of God than to try to judge him. And I, this is, again, where we were, like, really disappointed. This is disappointed. where I fall off. This is where I'm like, no, this is bullshit. I feel like a different author, like, rewrote that portion. Like, he was so pointed and smart. And then with nothing, God comes down and is like, I know more than you. And then Job's like, I know, you're so right, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, that's not the same man. No, no. He had lots of really good questions, and mm-hmm. God needs to answer those fucking questions. I mean, we were sitting over here going, oh, damn. Right? And then. And then he just caves. He's like, yeah. fuck it. Like, I 10 minutes right. later, he's like, I'm not worthy. Right, yeah. <laughs> I hated it. Um, so going back to God's speech, the inclusion of legal terms in chapter 40. Legal terms, huh? Like contend, argue, okay. answer, you know, those okay. kinds sure. of things. Yeah, yeah. Suggest that God does not intend to present evidence for the defense, but rather to show Job why the process is flawed in the first place. Because Job wishes to see God in court based on the very narrow view of the retributive justice in the world. Okay. So it just this is just another way of saying um God is like I will use your legal terms since you brought up like taking me to court or whatever. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is you're too stupid as a human to even raise this case. Got it. That that tracks with what I know of God so far. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. just has no um respect for humanity at all. Right. So disdains them yeah. completely. Right. Yeah. And we're supposed to keep in mind that God is not just a judge, but also, quote, unquote, the king who Mm. actively exercises his sovereign rule. And he does sometimes. I wish he'd actively, I mean, like, just just for the shits and giggles of it so I could know he's around. Mm -hmm. I wish he'd kind of actively, you know, enforce it now. Oh, my gosh. Wouldn't that be awesome? I'm just saying, like, that that would solve... All this. We wouldn't have a podcast to do anymore. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. wouldn't have to, you know, worry about it anymore. We just mm-hmm. know he's out there, you know, like, oh, okay. All and right. then it would be fun to see what he thinks of all of the people running around um, wrecking the world and bringing, bringing the planet to its ruin and speaking on his behalf and trashing everything that is supposed to be good. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It would be interesting. It would be an interesting exercise. I'm, I don't want God. I don't like the God of the Bible. No, 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 no. no. But he's a piece of if, shit. If if God were real, mm-hmm. why doesn't he actively exercise his power? Because he's not real. I know. Obviously, I know that. Right. I'm just saying. Like this is frustrating because we're like mad at a thing that doesn't exist, but we're mad because so many people insist he exists, and we're like. If he exists, then why doesn't he? But the answer to the question is in the question because he doesn't exist. Well, and they, if we, if what they would do, they would take each question we have about it and they break it down individually and go on for an hour about why this is this way. But then mm-hmm. they change their answer to something else over here. And then when you call them out on it, they're like, well, you just don't understand God. Yeah. And it's like, come on. Well, I forget what that process is called, but it's basically when you bury people in paperwork and wordy words. Right so long that you tire them out yeah and make them go away because they can't possibly keep up with right you know how how often do i give up 
You do not. You are tiresome. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say what I do is give up. I just like change my focus. Right. And I'm like, no, but when on Twitter, I will go down the rabbit hole with somebody for days. You will, and it's so annoying because you tell me all about it, and I'm like, <laughs> why are you laying in the mud with pigs? Why are you, you know, arguing with somebody who has the mentality of a three year old? I, I'm arrogant. You are arrogant. I'm arrogant. And That's all I got. Yeah. But also. I don't know what else to say. But also you like, okay, both of us have the thing where like, I'm right. Yeah. I'm right. And not only am I right and I know I'm right, but you should know it too. And here's why. Right. The difference between me and you though, is that you will keep going. Whereas I'm like, oh, you can't know that I'm right because you're dumb. <laughs> right. Uh, we just had a listener chime in. It was, I think, Brandolini's Law or something like that. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. I, I think I said the that right, The one where maybe. they tire you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, So going back here, anyway, God shows Job the futility of his pursuit. And the implied way forward is for Job to acknowledge it. So that's oh. what's implied is that Job is supposed to recognize that, you know, I, I shouldn't challenge you. I shouldn't. Could you do that? Like God killed all 10 of your kids if you had 10 kids, Absolutely right? not. I would. I could never. I, I could, could I don't, never. I don't care. Even if I knew God was there mm -hmm. and, and all powerful, right? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, no, fuck you. Right. We're going to have I, I this don't, out. I don't care. I don't care anymore. And fuck you. Yeah. That's that's where I would be at. Yeah. And, We're and Job was out. kind of there. He was. And that's why I, I just feel like, I feel like. These are two different characters or like the ending got rewritten. Because... Well, they always talk about how great God is, right? And the presence of God and mm -hmm. all this stuff, right? So it's like the presence of God shows up, right? And then Job all of a sudden is just like, and this is the way. Yeah. And okay, is he that great? Like, what the fuck, man? Did I mean, he come with bacon or something or okay, what? Okay, the only other thing is, come with bacon, <laughs> Jesus Christ. The only other thing is that, like, in the in the presence of God, whatever, you know, he's able to change your heart. Yeah. But I'm like, then why don't you just have people's hearts be right in the first fucking place? I think he's just a manipulative, toying little fuck. I think that the people that wrote the Bible were stupid and immature. Definitely. And... I think that the God that they made is equally so, if not more than. Yeah. No, it, yeah. the God of the Bible reflects humanity. Yeah. Because humanity was dumb. Yeah. So is, is dumb. Is dumb. Sorry. Yeah. Just because we can get to the moon and, you know, we have cures for various diseases doesn't mean that humanity isn't still dumb. Right. So Job's acknowledgement that he is, quote, small, shows the turning point from arguing against God into accepting what God has done in Job's life. He just accepts it. Yeah, no, I I mean, I hate it. He's like, it, but yeah. you're big, I'm small, and that's just the way it is. And I'm, right. I'm excited about that. I'm excited that you did something I can't understand when you killed my kids. <laughs> that's very exciting. This answer from Job is still tentative, though. Mm. Like, he I was still... I can imagine why. I know, right? He's like, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. So God proceeds with a second round of questions and observations. Yeah. More okay. boasting about what he's fucking. Yes. Done. Yes. Now, apparently that's going to go on for another chapter. Oh, we God. haven't got there yet. So okay. I don't know. But we're in the middle of God's second speech. So, I <sighs> mean, is it spoilers to say that? I don't think Not so. Really. OK. So God's second speech begins with a challenge. Before proceeding with the description of Behemoth and Leviathan. Yeah. Which, yeah, right. we, we read that. Yeah. So. We did. Which is funny because remember, Behemoth is sometimes translated to mean hippopotamus and Leviathan is sometimes translated to mean crocodile. Right. Which is just hilarious to me. Yeah. But they're not always translated to mean those things. Just great animals or whatever. Right, right. Y you well, know, they were magic. almost godly, like some, like we we've, we've dug into some rabbit holes with those things. Mm -hmm. and they almost are are like superhuman creatures that exist. Yeah, they're like god animal kind right. of things. Yeah, it's like weird. they can swallow the sun, and like they're as big as the ocean or whatever. That was like a special Patreon episode we did, wasn't it? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember if it was a Patreon or a Q and A, but they right. were 
they were very special animals that yes. actually um, come from prior civilizations. Right. So, they might even guard some of the seals of hell or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that right? I think so. Something that, like that. That sounds right. Right. But they they come from stories that were told well before the Bible ever oh, got yeah, there. Oh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, that makes sense because that's all Most the Bible the, is. Right, yeah. Yeah. So these two creatures are described as big in size and con- uncontrollable by humans, but God totally controls them all in his orderly world. Mm. Okay? okay. And that is as far as we got. Because we still have more speech to go. And we're in the middle of God's second speech. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Well, so, that was our uh, Q&A for today. Yeah. So that uh, puts us into tomorrow. We'll be back with our... Oh, um, tomorrow's Sunday. So Sacrilegious Book Club. Right? Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. And I'll get the weekly yeah. replay together tomorrow. Um, And then on Monday, we will be back with... Job chapter 40, which means that... Or I'm 41. sorry, 41, which means that we're almost done with the book of Job. Because yeah, there's only there's 42 two more, chapters. Total two more chapters to go right now. Yeah. All right. Well, we will see you guys then. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Oh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.